Okay, good evening everyone. The meeting of the John Stark School District Deliberative Meeting is called to order. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome to your deliberative session of the John Stark School District's Town Board. My name is Luke Drake. I'll be your moderator this evening. Our town has adopted the official ballot excuse me, referendum system, or SB2, under RSA 40 colon 13 as our process for both creating and amending school district warrants. Under this system, our role at tonight's deliberative session is to provide information and to debate and decide upon the final form of a ballot question to be presented to the voters on March 10th. I'll take a moment to review the moderator rules for the conduct of the meeting. This should be in your package. First thing, please silence all your phones. Uh, the right to speak. All eligible re residents in attendance have the right to speak on articles or amendments on the floor. Without objection, the moderator may also permit non-resident school district staff or their subject matter experts to provide information to the assembly regarding motions on the floor. All speakers and members of the assembly are expected to engage in civil debate and to refrain from personal attacks. Please be courteous while others are speaking. Please be respectful of others' opinions and their rights to express them. All discussions go through the moderator. If you wish to speak, please approach the microphone and address the moderator. If you are unable to approach the microphone, please advise the moderator or other staff so that we can bring a microphone to you. After being recognized, please clearly state your full name and address for the minutes. This is required under RSA A colon 3 2. Normal order of discussion. A motion to consider a warrant article must be made and seconded before any debate begins on the subject of the article. Both the mover and the second must provide their name and address to the moderator. After the motion has been moved and seconded, the maker of the motion will be given the first opportunity to speak, provided the motion is not ruled out of order. Moderator requests all speakers limit their remarks to 10 minutes on each motion. After the mover of the motion is spoken, other eligible members of the assembly will be provided the opportunity to speak. Appropriate proposals to amend the main motion may be offered by eligible residents during debate, but may only be discussed after they are moved and seconded. Any amendment which changes the subject matter of the main motion or makes changes to a contract warrant article or attempts to create a wholly new warrant will be ruled out of order. If any amendments to motions are adopted, debate will return to the main motion as amended. If any such amendments fail to be adopted, debate will return to the main motion without changes. The moderator requests that any member of the body proposing an amendment to a motion to please provide a written copy to the moderator prior to moving. Unless overruled by the body, no speaker will be permitted to speak on, excuse me, to any single motion or amendment more than once. Once debate is complete, the moderator will read aloud. I'm going to change this slightly. I'm going to read the warrant before we begin debate. Um, and then if there's been a change to it, I'll read the change, and then we'll call the question. Moder excuse me, the moderator will also indicate the, vote, the effect of voting for or against each motion. After the vote, the moderator will announce the results to the assembly. And I would like to take some time to recognize the folks who spend a lot of time every year preparing these warrant articles and also working on all these issues throughout the year. So let's start with the school board. Mr. Zach Lawson, chairperson. Ms. Jill Deganis, vice chair. Angela Drake. John Clancy, not here tonight. And Deb Urbatis. Uh, from SAU 24, we have Dr. Jacqueline Coe, Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Lorraine Taconi Moore, SAU 24 District Administrator, Ms. Sherry Burbank, Director of Student Services, Ms. Kathleen Sargent, Business Administrator, Dr. Gregory Reinhardt, Director of Technology. From John Stark School District, we have Mr. Gary Dempsey, the Principal. Our school attorney is attorney Barbara, Barbara Lofman, excuse me. Uh, school district clerk, Ms. Liana Lara Liberty. 
Supervisor of the Checklist from Henniker, Mrs. Lori Marco, and Mr. Ryan Gould. Nope. Karen Landis. All right, Karen Landis. Ryan is a lady. Ryan is a missing. Oh, well, I'll have, to put, I'll have to take that up with the person who provided me the list. I stand corrected. I'm sorry, could you, could you give me the name again? Ryan is a miss. No, no, I got that. No, Karen. Thank you. And supervisor of the checklist from where? Ms. Colleen Coey and Ms. Terry Wanowski. And last but by no means least, I'd like to thank all the townspeople from both towns for showing up tonight. I know the weather's not great. Um, we appreciate you coming out. It's uh, no small thing to be engaged in the education of the children of the community, so I appreciate that. Very well, I turn your attention to the 2020 John Stark warrant as submitted to the town on 1520. I will read the first article. <coughs> article 1. Shall the John Stark School District receive the report of agents, auditors, committees, and other officers chosen as printed in the annual report? Do I have a motion? I have a motion. Is there a second? has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your card. Thank you, opposed? The motion carries. Article two, shall the John Stark School District set the salaries of the school board and compensation for any other officers of the district as printed in the 2020, excuse me, 2020-2021 budget or take any action in relation thereto. Do I have a motion? You do. Moved and seconded. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, raise your cards. Opposed? The motion carries. Moving on. Article three. Shall the John Stark School District raise an appropriate as an operating budget, not including appropriations by special warrant articles and other appropriations voted separately, the amount set forth on the budget posted with the warrant or as amended by the vote of the first excuse me, session for the purposes set forth therein totaling $13,735,372. Should this article be defeated, the default budget shall be $13,629,377. Which is the same as last year with certain adjust adjustments required by previous action of the district or by law, or the governing body may hold one special meeting in accordance with RSA 40 colon 13, 10, and 16 to take up the issue of a revised operating budget. Do I have a motion? You do. I have a motion and a second. Discussion? Please recognize the chair of the board. everybody. Um, thank you again for coming out this evening. Um, I will uh, actually attempt to be uh, brief given that it's a Friday and that the weather is not awesome outside, um, but I do want to take the time to go through uh, a couple of articles with you. Uh, we are on Article 3 at the moment, which is uh, typically our, our, our budget warrant, uh, which is the case again this year. Um, I'm going to start with a, a little bit of, of um, sort of uh, uh, look back at, at some of the things that our students have done uh, and just sort of uh, talk a little bit and remind everybody what our core values are here at John Stark. Um, we're a community of learners who engage our minds in the pursuit of individual academic growth, social awareness, and community involvement. Our learning occurs in a safe and caring environment with regard, respect, and integrity. And you can see uh, the, the still life of our students here uh, doing as our core values would suggest. Um, that is my stepdaughter on the far left there. I would be remiss if I did not pause for a moment to share that she is in one of our pictures this year. Um, and our students, besides the classroom activities that they have, have been able to experience pretty amazing things here at John Stark. And I'd encourage you, if you, if you have not been to, to John Stark Expo, which is one of the things that gives, uh, you know, uh, non-parents, let's say, an opportunity to see what's going on at the school and what the students are working on, please do come. It's, it's in, a, in a few months. Come and see the performances. Uh, 
Um, and then the last thing I'll mention here is around the portrait of a graduate. Um, for those of you that have participated in that, some of the faces in the audience here are familiar. Thank you again for participating in that. Um, it is always, of course, helpful to have, again, non-parents involved in the process of what makes our school great and serves, serves the community, frankly. Okay, let's talk about the budget. So, um, as with uh, previous years, um, the point of, of why we put a budget together is to address the academic, social, and emotional needs of our students. Uh, it focuses on continuous improvement through our strategic plan uh, by offering 21st century learning opportunities and providing a variety of co-curricular offerings and athletics. <clears throat> we are striving to increase operational efficiencies as we do every year. Um, and you know, I think you have seen as we've made these presentations uh, that we've been able to keep our budget in a declining school population, uh, similarly downward or level uh, given the, uh, the increasing cost of things like health insurance <clears throat> and other items that it takes to run a, a, a $13 million organization, $14 million organization. Um, so, um, we're going to talk a little bit about the previous budget. Um, the, the current budget for 2019-2020, which is the budget we're operating under now, uh, is $13 million uh, we are proposing a budget for 2021 um, at $13,735,372, which is an increase of $18,000, uh, $18,822, or a 0.14% increase. Um, uh, compared to the default budget, <coughs> which is uh, being, uh, which is calculated at, it's not proposed, it's calculated at thirteen million six twenty nine three seventy seven, um, that represents a decrease of our over our existing budget of eighty seven thousand one hundred seventy three dollars, or 064 percent from the current budget. These are the items that affect our budget. Uh, many of you have seen these items before, but I will go through them quickly. Um, our mandated drivers are, our, are considered our contractual obligations and special education contracted services. In other words, tuition and transportation um, for students uh, that have needs that cannot be serviced by the school here. Um, things and technology and software are also mandated drivers. Um, budget reducers, um, we, we, we are looking at position reductions. Um, del uh, dental and health insurance this year is actually reducing for the first time in many, many years. Um, there is one isolated year out there where we've seen a reduction of a similar variety. Um, for the first time ever, we have, um, in, in, in my time doing this, uh, we have a minus 2.7% GMR, which means it could go down even further still before, before we, uh, we get through the rest of the school year. Um, we have some maintenance contracts um, that are, are going to help reduce the cost this year. Um, we have reduced our co-curricular and athletic transportation costs. Books and supplies are, are, will, will be reducers, um, and we do have some reductions in special education dues and fees. Um, so now we'll go in here. This is a little bit more detail about the drivers in both the proposed and default budgets, uh, which again are, are what we consider our mandated drivers. Um, we're looking at some contractual increases um, based on expected track changes of, of teachers and, and support staff. Uh, as well as um, uh, changes in compensation for co-curricular um, uh, activities for, for teachers to oversee that based on, on contractual obligations, uh, and then the corresponding FICA unemployment and workers' comp charges that go along with those particular items. Um, special, special education contract services uh, are up. Um, Security protections and repairs, transportation, out-of-district tuition, which is a big item here. Um, that is, of course, based on student need again. Um, the SAU district share, which is the portion that the John Stark School District pays to the SAU uh, for the management of the overall district. Their share is increasing by $21,000. Um, there's a very minor increase here for auditors. Our property and liability insurance is going up by, this is, this is a small amount by comparison to our budget, but it's a fairly significant amount uh, given the price of our, of our actual property and liability insurance. Um, replacement equipment for our 504 um, accommodations. Uh, computer software and dues. Uh, this, is a, this is a particular year uh, in which we have a, a, a bump or a bubble in the number of units or the, the licenses which we are obligated to purchase, which is why we see a, a particularly large jump this year. Um, and uh, principal on our energy project payment, which is um, three thousand five hundred thirty-two. This is a, this is an increase in principal for the for the um, uh, the performance uh, um, energy improvement plan that we had done. Uh, but keep in mind, this is still all part of the, the, the plan and is is still budget neutral, even though um, the uh, the principal is increasing here. 
Um, there are some additional drivers that affect our proposed budget above and beyond um, what is in our, our, um, our, our default budget here. Um, there are uh, some NEASC salaries that are involved in this uh, for managing our, our NEASC accreditation process, which we will begin going through next year. Um, there are some non-union salary increases in here, um, which, which is essentially anybody in the administrative portion of, of the school uh, that is not a teacher or a collective bargaining unit member in the support staff. Um, we are looking at a long-term substitute teacher uh, and some sixth period assignments. Uh, we, we have some other uh, contract services which we are looking to procure as part of this budget. Uh, part of this budget, uh, we have some uh, some needed classroom and building repairs. Um, and for what it's worth, the detail behind most of these items is available on the SAU website. Um, we have we have talked about the um, uh, the, the initiatives that are behind these items. Uh, if anybody would like to get into that detail, um, the classrooms uh, we have classroom supplies and software, um, which will also be be increased here. Uh, these are other items which, again, we have a bit of a bubble in needing to purchase, but they are not mandated. These are these are items which we are we are choosing or asking the voters to approve for us. Um, I realize I skipped over general transportation. Um, there's some changes there that we we need to accommodate. Uh, we would like to purchase some new security and safety equipment, uh, some new art supplies. Uh, and then we have some co-curricular dues and fees that would allow for us to add some additional that are not mandated. Um, and then we have uh, a couple of other computer lines that are in here that again are, are not related to items that are mandatory. They are not items which we have already had. These would be new items that we are looking to add uh, to accommodate some other regulations or other legislation that's been passed down from the state of New Hampshire in order for us to help uh, prepare or, or protect student information. Um, and then this last item here, which uh, is this transfer to food service, uh, is an item that will show up in the detail of these budgets. Um, there, is a, there is a corresponding revenue line that's associated with this. However, we have to, we have to identify that it is a, a budget expense driver because that is the portion which all of you would be approving at this, at this point. So I'm going to run through, through some quick math with all of you here. Um, that the drivers in both the proposed and default budget, those come in at 329913 um, the other increases that I just ran through you, which are in our proposed budget, weigh in at 159,374. So that means that the grand total of our budget drivers in the proposed budget come in at $489,207. Now, there are some reducers on top of that. Um, so we have uh, seen some staff reductions, um, and we have also seen some census changes. Again, census changes mean um, uh, voluntary elections of our staff uh, to change uh, the, the level of insurance which they are, are currently purchasing. Um, the health insurance uh, will be reducing because there is a 2.7% reduction in the GMR. Again, that's the GMR stands for the guaranteed ma uh, maximum rate, which is um, uh, what we, we receive from Health Trust uh, in the fall. Um, so that is, that is very good news. Uh, we have um, a reduction uh, due to a retirement and some long-term disability um, that would allow for us to save on wages there. Um, we see a reduction in the cost of our dental insurance. Some maintenance contracts will reduce in price. This is largely related, again, also to the, um, uh, to the, the nature of our, uh, our energy improvement plan. Um, water and sewer will also go down in price. Um, some disposal services. Um, we have... Um, we have transportation reductions. A lot of this has to do with the fact that we have procured a van uh, for, for transportation of students, um, which has allowed for us to save uh, a considerable amount of money in our, in our budgets going forward. Um, we have fewer books that we'll be buying. We have some other reductions in supplies between you know, testing supplies and custodial supplies. Um, we are replacing less in the way of our Project Lead the Way equipment, um, and we have some other special ed general ed dues and fees that will be redu reduced. Uh, and then um, uh, our interest, uh, will be reducing itself by $2,400 on that same energy improvement project. As our principal increased, our, our, our interest that decreased here. And we have a couple of other miscellaneous items that weigh in right around $4,000. So um, the analysis of the proposed budget um, shows that you know, the, the uh, drivers, which I shared with you on a previous slide, offset by the reducers that I just walked through with you at $470,000, uh, is how we arrive at our difference of 18822 which I shared with you several slides ago. Okay, so uh, really quickly as a, as a reminder for what a default budget is, uh, under SB2, uh, the default budget consists of the current year's budget figure minus one-time expenditures, plus or minus contractual obligations, 
anything related to health or safety issues or anything mandated by law. Uh, the 2021 budget uh, default budget is 13629377 It's a decrease of $87,173 from the current budget, uh, and it is, is $105,995 less than the proposed budget. And I'm going to walk through this very quickly uh, to show you what some of these items actually are. Um, or to explain the uh, sorry the difference between the two, um, the default budget is thirteen million six twenty nine. Uh, the current budget is thirteen seven sixteen five fifty, which is how we arrive at our eighty seven thousand one seventy three, and our proposed budget is thirteen million seven thirty five three seventy two. Again, it's that same default budget figure of thirteen million six twenty nine three seventy seven. That's how we see our increase of one hundred and five thousand nine ninety five. And the, the thing that I will leave you with here, there's been, um, fortunately, many of you are members of the Wear Finance Committee in our audience tonight, so many of you are well aware of this situation here. Uh, there are some projected one-time funds from the state of New Hampshire that we will be receiving as we go into the next school year. Um, what's, what's being shown here is the total matrix of um, uh, what, what is being uh, supplied and how it is calculated, but the number that you want to pay attention to is this one here. Um, this uh, total uh, one-time funding of four hundred and sixty-seven thousand six hundred and forty-six dollars. Um, this is the uh, this is the same amount that we'll be talking about in Article Four in just a moment. Um, but please do understand that this is one-time funding that we will be receiving from the state as we go into next year. Okay. That is all I had prepared for Article Three. Um, I think we can move on to the next board. Is there other discussion on Article 3? Mm -hmm. Can I speak with the microphone? Uh, Neil Kirk, Chair, uh, Vice Chairman of the Ware Finance Committee. Uh, the Ware Finance Committee recommends this article with 11 of its members voting in favor and two in opposition. The proposed budget is greater than last year's operating budget by 0.14%. The default budget is a decrease of 0.64%. The committee supports the proposed budget and believes the Stark Board has made a good effort to keep costs down consistent with a lower student population. Thank you. Ma'am? Could you just speak a little bit to the increase um, in the out of district tuition? Are you driving that? Obviously not. I will direct that question to members of the board. Yeah, we, we actually, we can't get into the details of, of a particular student need or anything along those lines. Um, and uh, fortunately, or rather unfortunately, however you choose to look at it, our student population with those kinds of needs is fairly small. So getting into those details, even if we are if we do it in a general way, is, an un, is unfortunately identifiable for those students. So, so we, we, we do not get into that territory. So it's student driven, it's not like you're, you don't have the staff anymore. Oh no! If that's if that's the basis of your question, for those of you who didn't hear, she 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 was um, uh, curious whether this is based on uh, we, whether we lack the the, uh, the ability to teach a certain uh, kind of uh, subject or anything along those lines. No, it is 100% driven by by student need, uh, and uh, historically and, and maybe quite to the contrary, uh, we have at times brought in particular uh, talents or skills when we we have enough of a similar student need to justify keeping that service in the district when when it becomes affordable to do so. Thank you. Additional discussion. Thank you. Uh, Tom Flaherty, Sunrise Lane Weir. Uh, last year, the district entered into a long-term lease for uh, improvement on the energy plant. Um, and there's, in the budget reducers, I was expecting to see something in there for energy cost savings. Is, it, is that in there, or are we not seeing savings yet? So it's a, it's a fair question. Um, it, it will not be in the list of budget reducers because the, the energy savings have been realized in real time in our, in our budget to begin with. The, the, the reduction we have had in energy savings has been offset by an increase in the debt service, which we talked about this evening between the principal and the interest on that loan, um, to, to cover that. And now if you recall, the, the warrant which was approved by voters was considered a tax neutral warrant article, which would indicate that um, in a worst case scenario, the energy savings which we which we yield from this right are are um, about the same or hopefully better than what we are paying in debt service or in the loan or the lease for these items. Um, so we don't um, we don't take a 
well, a couple items here. There, there's, we, we are conservative in the, in, the, in the sense that we are not going to bet that we are going to see further reduction in the future, which is why you do not see that as a budget reducer. I'm going to contradict myself immediately and say that if we see a trend in our, our electricity or our fuel consumption use over the, the next several years, and I, I can't tell you exactly how, how many years it will take to develop that trend, then we might be able to get a better sense of what we are able to actually budget that at once we've had a few years of having the wood chip boiler and the LED lights and the better transformers and controls in the whole nine yards. But for the time being, we are budgeting um, essentially what our what our reduced our initial reduced electricity and, and fuel consumption costs were, as well as the um, uh, the, um, the debt service, the the, the loan amounts here. Uh, thank you, Paul. Can I ask a follow up? Man, is uh, is there an analysis being done or reporting on, on this information that's available to the public? Yeah, it, it's a great, it's another good question. Yes, I mean we're as curious as you are. Um, one of the things that we are glad to hear is that this is doing better than expected. Um, but uh, like like you're asking, we would like to see sort of the analysis for that. So um, I'm going to look at you, Kathleen, and, and say when could we expect something along those lines? Yeah, we're working on it right now. Okay. So yes, please stay tuned. It is something that we will very likely post on the SAU 24 site, um, and, and it will likely show up in our minutes as well once it's once it's been presented to the board, so that everybody will be able to have a chance to look at it. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Is there additional discussion? It's Ryan Nace, 195 Concord Stage Road. I had a question for the board on the. Reducer that started for three full time equivalent. So that's three teachers that are gone? The equivalent of three teachers? I, I would, right. So there are some that are part time positions. A lot of that happened in our um, foreign language department where you had some people that were teaching like a point six or a point four, okay. those kinds of things. So that um, I think we stopped teaching Latin. And there's another one. So taking out all of the different positions like that that weren't going to run full sections. So all together, grand total, it's three full-time equivalents. And it was in the world language? Part of it's in the world language. Yes. Primarily. Yeah. Special ed. A special ed. Yeah. yeah. And then the other concern I had is uh, for the additional, that the SAU is 21000 for John Stark. Yeah. Um, can somebody tell me what the SAU altogether has gone up? I'm going to need some help on that one, guys. Well, part, part of what, what, what makes that confusing is even, even, if the, even if the budget for the SAU does not go up, the, the district share between where John Stark and Henniker can change based on equalized valuations and student enrollments. So uh, sure. your, your question is still a good one. I, I, don't, I don't remember exactly what it is. It was, it was around 20, 21, I remember, but I could be wrong. It was in the fall before we had a lot more numbers in the yeah, if you want to give us a minute or two, we can come back with that information and share that with you. I guess my, my concern is all is, I'd like my taxpayers money to go to teachers, mm -hmm. no offense to the SAU, but not to more administrators at SAU, Understood. but rather to see more boots on the ground, so to speak. Yeah, I, I can share with you that, um, I, you know, I personally share that sentiment, um, and, and not that the, the administrative staff... No, I don't mean it's right, like the SAU either. <laughs> I'm just saying if I have to choose, I'm going to... Choose. Totally get it. Um, and and it, it is... Um, it is a regular thing that, that concerns me that, again, as a multi-district SAU, because of our structure, it, re it does require a certain level of administration above and beyond the, the, the school or building level administration. Um, that, you know, that, that's why we need SAU 24. Um, you know, I, 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 I you know, employ the rest of the board to weigh in on this as well, but um, I, I am fairly certain that as we go through that budget with the, the SAU, it, it's, it's a fairly lean budget for a, an administration that is responsible for multiple districts within, you know, within this SAU. So it helps us to generate, I mean, as you're, I'm sure, really well aware of, we have a number of uh, money in lines in our budget that are due to grants. And so uh, building level administrators are not folks who are going to be out writing grants and dealing with all of that grant administration and all of the HR that relates to that. And that is a very, um, it's a very intensive level of service. And without, frankly, we're sharing that cost amongst Henniker Ware and John Stark. And if we had to have somebody in-house to do all of the HR, all of the Title I grants. We're mandated to have a superintendent, as I'm sure you understand by statute as well. So those things, by being able to share them, actually, I believe that we're still saving money. And we're going to continue to run the numbers on that. But 
it's, it's my opinion after looking at the numbers, we're still saving in the long run by continuing to share that cost. And did we have a more definitive number from PSAU? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, please. The, uh, we are. We feel pretty confident we are going to be able to meet the needs of student uh, requests with the staffing we have, um, and and part of the the um, cut within the world language was we could not find a Latin teacher to hire. Um, and, and so that was a programmatic change we made because we could not hire someone. Very good. Is there other discussion on Article 3? Not moving towards the microphone. <laughs> Very good. Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor of passing Article 3 as written, raise your cards. Thank you. Opposed? The motion carries. I'd like to move to restrict reconsideration, please. Second. We have a motion to restrict reconsideration of Article 3 and a second. Any discussion? Actually, there is no discussion. Um, raise your card if you agree. Thank you. Those opposed? So moved. Very good. Moving on to Article 4. Shall the John Stark School District vote to establish a capital reserve fund under the provisions of RSA 35-1 to be known as the Capital Improvement Capital Reserve Fund, funded by a one-time adequate education grant funds the district will receive in the next fiscal year for the purpose of funding infrastructure costs to existing buildings and grounds for the district's facilities as articulated in the John Stark School District Capital Improvement Plan and further, to appoint the John Stark Board as agents to expend and also raise and appropriate up to $467,646. Do I have a I'll move that. We have a motion, uh, excuse me, the motion's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Yes, please, yep. Uh, before I speak to this, I'm actually, uh, Deb actually has the number for the SAU budget piece. The increase is 41,284 total. Yes, across across all districts. And, and uh, remember folks, I, I know you know this is a regional high school for, for Henniker and for Ware. Um, the SAU also administers a, the, the, the town of Stoddard's um, schools as well. Might we have the total? If the increase is that much, I'd love to know what their total budget is. Figure out the percentage. Is it proper to answer this I don't, I don't know. It's, it's not mine to allow. <laughs> Is that okay? I mean, I can do it. I need to. It's a bit out of order, but I'll allow it. All right. So this is taken from the SAU um, board minutes from November. 1,419,337. And the increase? Was 41,284. Thank you. Very good. We're moving back to discussion of Article 4 now. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so we have we have one slide prepared here, uh, and th this is actually the second time uh, that we've proposed an article of this nature. Um, the fundamental difference this year is uh, the one-time funding that we are looking from uh, looking at from the state of New Hampshire. Um, but the, the way this article is designed to work is that. Um, uh, Voting yes on this article would allow for the school board to raise and appropriate uh, a sum of $467,646, um, which is exactly equivalent to that one-time uh, set of funds from the, uh, from the uh, state of New Hampshire um, to establish this new capital reserve fund. Um, although not written in the article, uh, the, the discussion points around the use of that expendable trust um, are that it is to be used in conjunction with the other expendable trusts which we already have in place, which we would like to deplete, um, to undertake projects which exist on a capital improvement plan which is posted um, on the SAU website. Um, the, the capital improvement plan will of course change and will evolve over time as projects are completed and new items and new priorities are identified, but the, the intention is to not be before you uh, during a particular uh, budget hearing or deliberative session, 
uh, with a new surprise kind of item that shows up on a warrant somewhere, uh, but rather be able to show you in real time what it is that are the infrastructure items that are needed by the school here and already know exactly where that source of funding is going to be coming from in the form of this expendable trust, which will of course require a public hearing from the school board to be able to distribute or disperse any funds from or use them for that purpose. So. Um, those are the high points for this article. Um, keeping in mind that this this is a one-time um, this is an item that is funded from those one-time funds. Um, our original plan and and the the, the 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 math as it stands right now is that this fund would need to be funded at roughly two hundred thousand dollars a year to keep pace with the projects we know that we need to undertake. Um, by receiving these one-time funds, we will not only not ask for the two hundred thousand dollars in this year, we will not ask for it next year during this particular process. So not, it, it's, a, it's a convenient way to fund our plan as we have put it together for the next two years. That's all I've got, thank you. Is there additional discussion? Uh, Neil Kirk for the Ware Finance Committee. The committee recommends this article, 13 voting in favor, none in opposition. This article provides significant funding towards necessary capital improvements at John Stark High School in accordance with the school board's long-range capital improvement plan. The money to pay for this comes from a one-time adequate education grant from the state intended to be used for capital improvements. Passage of this article would result in no tax increase. If the article fails, the grant money will be used to lower the tax rate by 37 cents, but the reduction would be for one year only and requests for maintenance items in this article would then appear on subsequent warrants to be funded wholly by taxation. Thank you, Mr. Kirk. Is there additional discussion on the article? Hi, Tom Flaherty, Sunrise Lane Ware. Uh, just a procedural question on this, and it just might be my, um, I just don't understand something. So it looks like it, there, there's a tax impact for this year, but that's going to be um, reversed when the grant comes in next year? Is that how it works? Um, no, actually, I'm going to, let me pull up the slide here. Okay. Are you you're referring to the information on this slide here? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, um, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good question. Um, the point that uh, Neil just made there about the actual impact on the budget and the 37 cents that you see up there is a, it is a, it is a number that is the value of that 467 some odd thousand dollars, okay? If the voters do not approve this, it will reduce your tax rate by 37 cents, okay? If you do approve this, it, 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 will, it, will, it will raise it by 37 cents. So that's where the net sort of comes, comes into play, okay? You will receive the revenue no matter what happens. It's, it's going to happen. If you approve this, you will, see, you will be able to use that revenue to fund this particular, particular warrant article. So it, we have to share that it is, it is valued at 37 cents per thousand. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you, is there additional discussion? <coughs> I'm John Lawton, Oka Group. Zach, I just have a question on the tax increase figure of 43 cents. Could you explain how that comes about? Sure. Um, I'm just thinking, we, I don't think we did the, the difference between the two that are up there, is that right? I mean, I look at the, uh, the budget we're currently in and the proposed budget, it looks like it's like a six cent difference, and then you have a tax increase of 43 cents. I'm just a little miffed as to what that represents. No, it, it's it's the amount of both of those things. I, I understand the issue now, yeah. So that, that that is the six cents plus the 37 cents. So the um, keeping in mind that the, the 37 cents, as I had just stated, is the, is the one-time funding, plus the six cents differential between the two budgets is how we arrive at the 43 cent impact to these items that are on here. Yeah, but as I understand it, Article 4 is a zero tax impact. Yeah, that's, that's what I was just explaining a moment ago. It, it, so you have to consider it in this order. The, the revenue from the state will be received regardless. So that means that it will, all things being equal, redu it will reduce your current tax rate by 37 cents if, if the revenue arrived and we did, you voted no on Article 4, for instance, okay? By voting yes on Article 4, you, you will raise your tax rate by, 40, uh, by 37 cents. So 
we have to share with you here the impact of your decision on Article 4, which is is equivalent to 37 cents. That's that's what that's all about. Okay, so we've raised that appropriation, but it will be offset by revenue. That is correct. Oh. That is correct. Yes, it is. It is. <laughs> we wanted to be able to explain this in the in the simplest way possible. It is very difficult to do so by having full disclosure. <laughs> Is there additional discussion on Article 4? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor of passing Article 4 as written, please raise your card. Thank you. Opposed? The motion carries. There being no other business before this. Mr. Moderator, I have a couple of slides I'd like to share on tax rate, if I, if I may. Without objection. They're sort of the the, uh, the requisite slides that are on here um, that will under, uh, identify what the increase is um, uh, per town here. Um, so this here is uh, Ware's share of the proposed budget, um, which is the 43 cents that we had said. Um, if the default budget um, is there, it's it's 36 cents, which is if you if you again take out the uh, the capital reserve item on number four, it, it's reflective of a one cent per thousand reduction overall. Okay, um, Henniger's share of the budget um, is a decrease of one cent per thousand proposed budget, or a, re a reduction of six cents per thousand uh, under the default scenario. So the um, the uh, in, in terms of a $250,000 home, uh, this is uh, equivalent to $107, uh, sorry, $107, um, or a, uh, if the default budget is passed, it's equivalent to $90. Keeping in mind, again, we're, we're factoring in the cost of the, um, uh, uh, the uh, Article 4 in this item. And Henniker, it would be a reduction of $2.50, or $15 if you adopt the, um, the default budget. And that's that. Thank you for the additional enlightenment. The, uh, that being the end of business for the uh, district, this meeting is adjourned.